On tonight's episode of Homemaking with Purpose, I am going to make a huge announcement, and you may have already peeked it, and do a critique of a video that I did a few years ago. So it's going to be a throwback what's for dinner. So let's start with the big announcement. I changed the name of my YouTube channel. It is no longer called This and That with Denise Jordan, but it is now called Homemaking with Denise. I just wanted a name that reflected more what it is that I do today. When I chose the name This and That with Denise years ago, I wanted to talk about a variety of things, and I did. But now that I've pretty much niched down to homemaking, I decided I wanted to call it Homemaking with Denise, and maybe that'll make it more easy for you to find me. And YouTube is pretty good about getting those things switched over. So all of my older videos and that kind of thing, they are gradually, slowly changing the names to Homemaking with Denise. Now let's take a look at this throwback video. It is called TNT Live What's for Dinner and I'm making a chicken and noodle dish in less than 30 minutes. The first thing I did was put my noodles on to boil. I filled my pot with about four quarts of water and sprinkled in two teaspoons of salt. My noodles of choice, Essen House noodles. Now here's the thing, some will say to add more salt, some will say to add less salt. How much salt you add depends upon your personal preferences and your dietary needs. However, the salted water is about the only time you have to season the pasta. So make sure you do add salt. Some say salt the water generously before you add the pasta or after you add the pasta. Just make sure you salt the water because you don't want flat, tasteless pasta. While the pasta was coming to a boil, I washed and diced two carrots and two stalks of celery. Then I added two tablespoons of olive oil to the pan, let it heat up, and then I sauteed my carrots, and then my celery. It was really quite interesting to take a look at that to kind of see how I did things three years ago and how I do things now. So one of the first things that I noticed when I was cooking was that I didn't have an apron on. I was like, what are you doing and what were you thinking? Today, I would not even walk to the sink or walk to the stove without putting an apron on because I would want to protect my clothing. I'd want to stay clean and mess free. And I did not have an apron on, so I certainly would not do that today. And I let the pasta finish cooking in that. And oh my goodness, the noodles soak up the chicken broth and it makes them taste amazing. Then I add my soup. You can either add two cans of cream of chicken or one can of cream of chicken and one can of cream of mushrooms. It's your choice. I'll usually add one of each if I know that I'm not dealing with any mushroom allergies. One of the other things that I think I do a pretty good job is, is showing different few perspectives when I'm actually cooking so I bring you up close so that you can see what I'm doing that kind of thing but I did notice that on this video I talked for the first two minutes I was like oh my goodness am I ever going to stop but yes I started out talking about what I was going to talk about I told you what I was going to talk about and then I talked about it so no I don't talk quite that much anymore today I just try to jump right into the video Then I'll add the rest of the chicken broth. It's hard to say just how much chicken broth to add. 
It depends upon how thick or how thin you want your sauce. If you like your sauce thinner, then you add more chicken broth. If you want your sauce thicker and creamier, then you will add less chicken broth. And you'll notice that I did not add any more salt. There's salt in the soup and there's salt in the rotisserie chicken, so I did not add any more salt. You can decide whether or not you need more salt based upon your personal taste. Now here's a question for you. What spices do you like to add when you're making chicken and noodles? Tell me in the comment section below. April says she likes to add cayenne pepper and thyme. So that's going to give it a little bit of heat. She says there's also an island spice that she likes to use that has onions and garlic and a combination of other island spices that she enjoys in her food. Mickey says she likes salt, pepper, and a little onion powder. So what do you like to add to your chicken and noodles? Now that the noodles and sauce base is ready, I'll add in the carrots and celery. I'll stir that in gently so as not to break up the noodles. And then it's time to get my chicken out of the bag and into the pot. It's already thawed and has come to room temperature while I was taking care of other things. It just needs to be cut up into serving size pieces. You can take the skin off or leave the skin on. Again, that's up to you. But leaving some of the skin on provides additional flavor. Now in this particular 30 minute meal, I am using a rotisserie chicken to get the meal on the table quickly. And I'm using a steak knife to cut the chicken up, which I don't do today. I've got some much nicer knives to work with. And the other thing I did was I cut the chicken into eight or nine pieces and I put the pieces into the pot rather than shredding the chicken up. Today I shred the chicken up into bite-sized pieces. And one thing that I got quite a few comments about on this particular video was when I had my cutting board on the counter it kept kind of moving around a little bit when I was trying to cut up the chicken. And so many people sent me comments and said if you put a dish towel underneath the cutting board it won't spin around well thank you for that tip i did get that tip three years ago and i do make sure to implement it now so i don't have a cutting board that's spinning all around anymore i do have a towel underneath it so that it does stay put one of the first things that i noticed when i'm watching this video is that i'm using swanson's chicken broth now i tend to use swanson's chicken broth most of the time when i purchase chicken broth unless i'm really tight on the budget and then i'll buy the store brand however i have now learned to make my own chicken broth my own vegetable broth so i tend to do that i'll try to keep maybe one or two cartons of purchased chicken broth on the shelf just in case but i almost always have chicken broth in my freezer that I've made myself or the scraps in the freezer for the making of it. So I rarely purchase chicken broth anymore. However, I do like this better than bouillon chicken and it is so good. It's an organic chicken base, roasted chicken base, and you can add a teaspoon of that with a cup of water and you've got delicious chicken broth. So sometimes if I want to beef up the chickeny flavor, I'll add a little bit of this. Then add a dollop of chili sauce. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I like to add a dollop or two of chili sauce in most foods that I cook. Now some people get a little bit crazy when I say I like to add chili sauce to a lot of my foods. But the chili sauce adds wonderful flavor, but none of the heat that you get from say hot sauce or red pepper sauce. All flavor, but no heat. 
I'm not one who likes hot foods, but I do enjoy flavor. I started adding chili sauce to my food, oh, about 10 years or so ago when I made a recipe called Creole Chicken, and the author of the book encouraged us to use chili sauce in the recipe. And it was so delicious. It really made that recipe so flavorful, but there was none of the heat that you get with hot sauce, and I have been a believer ever since. So what's your secret sauce? What do you like to add when you're making dinners for your family? Now I do add a dollop of Heinz chili sauce in the video and then I go so far as to explain why I use the Heinz chili sauce and I probably wouldn't talk that quite that much about that today but there were quite a few comments about that originally. Now people that follow me know that I always put in a dollop of chili sauce so it's not a big deal. However, since I made that video three years ago, I've been doing a lot of canning and making things myself. So now I make my own chili sauce and so I don't purchase the Heinz chili sauce anymore. I'm using the, my own that I've made from tomatoes that I've grown or tomatoes that I picked up in season. Now one of the big things that I noticed when I plated up the meal was that the chicken in the dish had the skin on it. Today, I would not leave the skin on the chicken. I'm on the Weight Watcher program, and it is recommended that you remove the skin. That's going to reduce the fat, reduce the calories, and it's going to make it healthier for you. Now, of course, the fat from the chicken does add flavor, but if you use a combination of white meat and dark meat, you can get that flavor added that way. And if I'm making my own chicken broth and I leave the skin in the pot when I'm making the broth, once the broth cools and it gels and the fat rises to the top, I'll take a spoon and scrape that fat off the top and get rid of it. One of the things that I noticed is that I'm using my Curtis Stone cookware, which I still use today. I've had that cookware probably for about five years, and it still looks just as nice today as when I first got it. I mean, it does look like I've used it, but it still looks pretty darn good. However, I've also added the Caraway enamel cookware to my cooking toolbox, and I really like the way they cook, the way they work. So I've got that now, which I didn't have then. Now to get this meal on the table in less than 30 minutes, starting with a rotisserie chicken was half the battle. The chicken was already cooked and already thawed. And I would already made this meal before. So I was not making something new. And that's key. When you've got to get a meal on the table in a hurry, you can't be, or rather you shouldn't be trying something new. Now something else to think about is this. You could possibly get two meals from this rotisserie chicken. You could cut it in half and have half of it on Sunday for a Sunday dinner with maybe a baked potato and some veggies on the sides or whatever. And then the other half shred up into small pieces and put that into your dish for your chicken and noodles. So then you would have two meals from that one meat. The other thing you could consider is using canned chicken. Either way, you could get a meal on the table pretty quickly. This meal was absolutely delicious and the hubby loved it. And I served it up with green beans and cranberry sauce on the side. What do you like to serve on the side when you make chicken and noodles for your family? If you like this video where I showed you how to make the chicken and noodle dinner in less than 30 minutes, Click on this video right here where I show you how to make a turkey pot pie from your leftover holiday turkey.